Thank you, Program Director, and thank you, Premier, for supporting me to come to this stage. I address myself to the family, the Square family, and also the Mazibugo family, and I would like to associate myself with all the speakers who have expressed their condolences on the loss of this great colossal figure of our liberation. Nila Lemotolo, Nabago Square, Nan Bonzima, Aguatanga Lungetang, see La Tagula Song. I have very short time, I'm told. I want to be very brief. I'm usually very uh, talkative, lengthy, but uh, in respect of uh, our late uh, Dr. Square, who was a man of very few words, a man who acted, a man of action, a man of vision, an architect, as we've been told. I would like to propose, uh, President, that uh, at this time, when we celebrate the life and the times of uh, Comrade Zola, and we've had a litany of the wonderful, wonderful things he did for us, he impacted in a wonderful, unique way in our lives. I, I would like to propose, President, that at this time, the best tribute we can pay to Convict Zola is a commitment on our part that we are going to pursue all the projects, all the wonderful things he did. A commitment that uh, we now take on the task of making sure that all the things that uh, he left us with are done. That's a wonderful way of a tribute. Now, President, <laughs> President, I'm also very delighted. I feel so grateful. Yesterday, as you were landing at the airport and as I was looking at the visuals on the television of the ugly scenes in one of our provinces, Northwest, looking at the ugly scene of our people, telling it in very painful terms that uh, service delivery has not impacted on us. Saying this in a variety of ways, but even more painful, President, the visuals showed the faces of the people, including, including the faces of the young children, young boys, with bullet wounds on their faces wounds from the guns of the police. That is not a sight that our Convict Zola would have liked to see. That, that is not the sight who he would have liked to see after he had given us the flagship of service delivery, Badubili. Badubili is what Dr. Square left for us. It's a legacy that is going to live with us for years and years, but it has not yet started taking place on our ground. I'm grateful to you, Mr. President. I don't have to invent this tribute because you wrote it. You know, in a wonderful feat of premonition, you had premonition about this, Mr. President, because in your statement of January 8, in your statement of the, 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 the state of the nation, you pinpointed all the matters, all the issues that Comrade Zola cherished so much. You raised the issue, you raised the question very pointedly, why is it that our civil servants are not embracing the Batupili policy? That is the question you raised. And I'm saying to you, Mr. President, that question should not be asked 
of our civil servants. It should be asked of your executive, the ministers. Because it is the ministers that should create the environment. The environment in which this policy is not a slogan, not a slogan when you say Batupili. It is a statement, it is a philosophy, a statement of how service delivery should be. That is what Comrade Zola had in mind. Service delivery must reach people. That service delivery must build our people. It's not a question of giving things to them, giving tractors. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want to give people food parcels. No, but Zola, <laughs> Comrade Zola wanted our people to be nurtured so that they can raise the means with which they can buy the tractor, with which they can buy the food. <laughs> Mr. President, I, 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 I like you. I, you know, like I like, uh, <laughs> like I like my football team, my melody. I, I clap hands, Mr. President, when I listen to your messages, because your messages to me are very much uh, reminiscent of what Comrade Zola wanted. When you say, Mr. President, and this is very clearly written in your statement of uh, January, or is it uh, in the statement uh, of the State of the Nation, we will be visiting, that is what you say, we will be visiting the departments so that we can talk to the leadership. I ask myself, what leadership will the president find? I know you are targeting the directors general. Mr. President, I'm afraid to tell you, those directors general are not leaders. Not because, not because they are a bunch of people who don't know what they are doing because they don't have the environment. Because, Mr. President, you know, these are CEOs. These are CEOs of a big establishment, government, a big enterprise. We in government are a big enterprise holding trillions of rand in our hands. And the DGs are CEOs, but they have not been treated as CEOs. They are messengers. You know, in your... In your, in your language, Mr. Dr. President, President, in your previous life, we all had previous lives, your previous life in the trade unions, you remember the, boy, the, the term bus boy, huh? <laughs> Spanella boy. That is what our civil servants are. That is what our teachers are. And I'm glad, Mr. President, by way of carrying action after what Dr. Zola said. I'm glad because also in your statement of the nation, you are saying we are going to bring back those mechanisms of appointing, appointing senior servants in the public service. Because that is where we lost it. That is where we lost it when the executive took it upon themselves to say that they are going to appoint the DGs. Executives are in no way qualified to appoint. <laughs> but Mr. President, I also like you because you have said you have said when we bring these mechanisms, we should restore the dignity, the dignity of the institution that was designated in the Constitution. In the Constitution that we were told was designed by this, our great hero. The Constitution created a public service commission, a body that is qualified to effect, you know, uh, appointments. I'm glad, Mr. President, you are going to bring that back. So as I said, Mr. President, <laughs> also, 
now, Mr. President, I must applaud you. I want to applaud you, take this opportunity, and I'm sure here I'm speaking on behalf of all my uh, colleagues, my former colleagues and the, the nation here. I must applaud you, Mr. President, for the wonderful, wonderful step you have taken to look for ways and means of bringing investment in our country. The, 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 the mega project, that's a, we've never had this project, a hundred million dollars of investment. That's big. That's, what you, that's how we should think. But I want to say, Mr. President, the success of that project will not depend only on the ministers. Yes, the ministers will outline policy. But that mega project will ride on the back of your civil service. A civil service led by capable DGs, a civil service led by DGs who are respected, who are given contracts. Give your DGs tenure, Mr. President. We saw this in Malaysia. Give them tenure, not five years contract. I've seen, Mr. President, in many countries, where DGs have contracts of 20 years so that they can actually have time to sit and actually dig themselves into the job and make forecasts of what is going to happen. So, uh, Mr. President, I, 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 I am uh, sorry I have to talk like this, but you are the one who have inspired me to talk like this. <laughs> And I thank you very much. I know I've taken too much time. Thank you very much for this opportunity of talking to you.